If you want to deploy apps in the cloud, the first thing you need to do is package them. And just like when you're shipping something into the world, the first thing that you need is a thing you want to send, like this graphics card. Then you need a box to send it in. Then you need some tape to make sure that the box is going to stay closed. Finally, you're going to need a shipping label to make sure it gets where it's supposed to go. And when that package is received, it's going to be opened by the right person, and I'm sure they'll only use it as directed. And your apps work the same exact way. You need something that you want to send, that's your application. The box is what's properly known as the package. That'll not only hold the application, but it's also the format that you're using to deliver the app. Your tape is the package security, and your shipping label is how you target the computers that you want to deploy the package to. But in a recent video, I got a lot of comments asking to see the Azure Compute Gallery's new preview feature called VM Applications. Here in the Azure portal, open the Azure Compute Gallery. Once here, click Add at the top and select a VM application definition. The definition is kind of a wrapper for your application and it'll hold all the app versions as you will see in a second. For the name, I like to call it whatever the app is called. So for this example, we'll use Putty. Next, you need to specify if this is for Windows or for Linux, then click Next. And here on the Publishing tab, this is where we can add supporting information about the app, like the description, the license agreement URL, and the end of life date for the app. Then click Next and add your tags. And don't forget to add the cm-resource-parent tag so you can roll up all of your costs as I showed in a recent video. Then click Create. And that'll be done in just a minute and then you can click right over there to go check out your new definition. At the top, click the plus again and now we'll be creating the application version. So the first thing we need here is a version number. And since this is a new application, you might think to use either 1.0 or 0.01 .01 or something like that. But I suggest instead that you use the version of the app that you're working with. That way you can keep track of which versions you have deployed in Azure along with the apps in the rest of the world. So my version of Putty is 0.70.0. Then select the region that you want to build the app in. Next, you need to upload your installer. So tap on Browse and this will be done using an Azure storage account. Select the account that you want to use, and now we need a container to store the files in. Once it's uploaded to your container, go ahead and click on it, and which for me is putty, and then hit the select at the bottom. Next, we need an install script, and the script here in Windows is gonna run through the command line, but in Linux, it would run through the shell. Oh, and the uh, command line, by the way, works exactly as it would if you were signed onto the Windows desktop. So you could even call other programs that are installed on the system like PowerShell if you want to. So here's my install script. First, we start with a rename command. This is because the app package will be downloaded onto the VM using the app's definition name, but that's gonna be with no file extension. Before any install command can be used, the file needs an extension, so it has to be renamed. Next, we have the double ampersand. Now, what's that about? This will tell the system to wait until the rename operation is finished before it starts the next command. The start function begins a new command prompt session and wait means that the session won't end until the rest of the commands are finished. So next, we're calling the MSI exec. Finally, we have the MSI's parameters. So the first one is slash I, and that's the particular installer file that we run. Slash QB means to run unattended with a basic user interface. Slash log is calling out the log file that we'll create and then dump all of our installation log data into. So back here in the portal, next thing is our uninstall command. And that's gonna be very similar to the install as you'll see here. Beginning with the start slash wait, calling MSI exec slash I putty.msi using the slash uninstall parameter and then using that same install log file for all of the data. The next thing here are update scripts. The one thing that you should be aware of is that if you do have another version out there of this application within this definition and you try to deploy that on top of an existing one, it's going to uninstall the first one before it installs the second one. Now, package file name I found to be a little confusing. According to the docs, it says that the package file name is the name of the file once the VM has downloaded it. But I've tried calling it all kinds of stuff and I haven't seen that actually happen yet. It's probably a thing about the preview. 
We'll see where this goes in general availability. Now for the configuration file, using this will depend on how the app was packaged. For example, my PuTTY file is in MSI, so I don't need a configuration because I can give it all the switches with MSI exec. But maybe you have a different kind of installer, for example, like Microsoft Office, where you'd want to feed it a configuration.xml file. You'd put that in here. Now the exclude from latest can be very useful if you're testing your app versions before rolling them out into production, as well as setting the end of life date here inside the version. So at this stage in the preview, there's two other things that you should be aware of. First is that the apps themselves can only be a maximum of one gigabyte packages. And second is that at this point, you can only deploy five applications per VM at this time. We got all that done, click next. And just like my recommendation when doing operating system images, I would not add multiple replicas or regions at this stage. That way we can be done with the build and know that it works instead of slowing down for an hour and a half and then figuring out that it failed. So let's click next again and add your tags just like you did before. And in just a few minutes, you've got your new application. And over on the left, you can go to replication. And here's where you can set all those regions and replicas to distribute it if you want to. And then also on the left, you can go to configuration change and you can play around with the exclude from latest as well as the end of life date. And with all of that done, you're ready to start deploying. So here's an existing VM that I have in the same region where the app package was built. And you can go over on the left to extensions and applications. Then click at the top on VM applications and click add. Check the box for the applications that you want to deploy, which means that you can also choose an install order of operations over there if you like. And finally, if you are going to have anything in a script that requires a reboot in order for the app to be available, make sure that those are in the last position because the reboot itself will cause the Azure agent to go offline as the VM reboots and you're gonna lose connectivity here. Rivers and seas boiling. 40 years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Enough, I get the point. And when you're ready, click save at the bottom. In a few minutes, the Azure agent will download all of the files onto the VM and then everything will be ready to go. Now, if you're dealing with new VM builds, you can use VM apps there also. During the normal VM build process, fill out everything as you always would. And when you get over here to the advanced screen, see right over there, you can add VM applications. And this is exactly the experience that you just saw a moment ago. Pick the apps that you want, click select at the bottom, and you're off and running. When the VM is provisioned, the apps will get installed automatically. Now, once they're installed, Uninstalling the apps is just as easy. Go back to the extensions and apps on the left, click the VM apps tab at the top, and then it's as simple as clicking uninstall on the app that you want to remove. Now the big question is, should VM apps replace every other method that you have for packaging and deploying apps? Well, maybe. The feature is still in preview, so unless you have nothing else to manage all of this for you, I wouldn't jump in with both feet just yet. And if you do have other tools in your environment, you've probably made some kind of investment in them. So you need to look at the cost of maintaining those systems versus the time it would take to set up everything here in VM apps. Especially since this is a near zero cost way of deploying and managing your applications. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this grows over time. So what do you think of VM app images? Comment down below and let me know. The next thing you should probably check out would be my Azure Image Builder Masterclass, where I help you to fully automate your imaging process from end to end, including monthly patches and all of your applications as well. Now, how can I tell you to do that after this whole video and everything I said about don't put your apps in your image? Click over and find out. Happy learning.